A place we're not allowed to reveal in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Wow, you're bad. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I... I'm your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes, anything at all, here at 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's 1 800 5 800 866. Bobby. In Parkland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? It's going great. Cool. Awesome day on Friday, huh? What happened on Friday? This is Friday. Oh, I know, but I'm just saying it's a nice day. It's sunny oh. out here in Portland and everything. Oh, well, in, it may be sunny in Portland, but here in L.A. today, it's been cloudy and kind of chilly. No way. <laughs> way. That's not good. That's not good. It's kind of like Portland here today. Without all the pork. Exactly. That's a sad thing, too. Hey, I called to talk to you um, about uh, Survivor. Did you watch that show at all? No, I don't watch reality shows. Neither do I, but it was very disappointing. I was with a girl last night, and she wanted to watch that. Of course, she wanted to watch, yes. And, watched it. and uh, it was so disappointing. Uh, it happens to be the show is, uh, you know, you're, you're on an island, and there's, there's one guy left and four broads, and uh, he's... Every week they vote somebody off, and you get an immunity necklace or some kind of crazy stuff like that. And so it happens the guy's been winning the necklace, and the broads have been able to vote him off and, and get the guy off the island. And uh, somehow he got the immunity necklace last night, and these these four broads, man, they, they, they're cunning and conniving, and they, they talked him into giving it to one of the other chicks. And then what happens? They vote him off. I was so disappointed. I had... I, I was like devastated. You were devastated. It's it, it was the it's it's, story it's a ever. reality show. What do you mean you're I devastated? Know, but it was just, it, it gave all kinds of men just a bad name from seeing that. You know. Yeah, but understand, reality shows in general are not reality at all. They are scripted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Television is written for women. And reality shows pretend to be real, but in reality, they are scripted. Yeah, that does make sense. So, yeah, of totally course... I that show, but, you know, that's a, the only one I watched, and, uh, yeah, I was so disappointed. I went to bed. There was nothing that was going to make me happy about that. Well, I... You know, I don't know why you've gotten so emotionally involved in it. I mean, did you really believe that what was happening on the screen was real? Oh, uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, it, really? it doesn't make sense. What you're, well, it does make sense now what you're saying. You know, it's for women and, you know. It, Television is for women. Yeah, yeah, I understand, yeah. With few exceptions. I used to say there were no exceptions other than sports, but I do watch a show like Two and a Half Men, which I think definitely has male appeal. You know, I was just actually going to say that. I resisted that show for a couple of years and then uh, well, I, I was in a hotel it. room, and uh, CBS was one of the three channels I could get. So I watched it and realized that that show is one of the edgiest, filthiest shows on television. And I found myself laughing at it a lot. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of your show, actually. Some of the things they talk about and kind of portray. Yes, and unlike other shows, I don't think it steals from our show. It just is the kind of show that uh, guys who list our show might like watching that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But most uh, television is for chicks. Uh, TV is just a big vagina with a cable box on top of it. That's all it is. That's why they call it the boob tube. That's right. Exactly. All right, Tom. Just take me out with a bong hit. Here you go, Bobby. 
No golf. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, here's Sandra on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Yes. I just wanted to ask your opinion on something. Okay. Um, have you ever, I guess, been out to a party with a bunch of friends, and I guess maybe one of them gets a little too drunk, and you're like, okay, that's it, I'm leaving you here. Or better yet, let's not stay at a party. Let's stay on a freeway. <laughs> and you pull over and you say, okay, get out. I've never had to say pull over. I've never had to pull over and say get out. I've never had to do that. I have left people at parties. Okay, so it's okay to leave them at parties, right? Just not on the freaking freeway, right? Yeah, well, that's what that's what I have done. I have left people at parties. Yes, people who get, are too screwed up and they're going to ruin my evening. No one ruins my evening. Oh, I mean, we were out last night. You know, me, my boyfriend, his brother, wife, and this friend of theirs, like sixteen years. And I guess you know, we're at the bar until like four, four thirty in the morning. We're all having a good time, and I guess the the wife and the friend kind of get into it over you know stupid crap over girls, and you know they had this argument at the bar, but we kind of left it there, and it continued in the car. And so the husband got pissed off that the wife and the friend were arguing, pulls over and tells them get out and leaves them there. Wow. And I was like, oh, my God, my boyfriend's too drunk to, like, even realize what's going on. If a chick, by the way, if a chick left me on the side of the road, uh, that would be the last she'd ever hear from me. No, 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 no. This was his friend. See, it was me and my boyfriend. His friend. I thought uh, you you were using the she pronoun. I thought you were talking about a chick. No, 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 no. It was me and my boyfriend, his brother, who was driving. Okay, which my boyfriend, the guy driving, these guys have all been friends for 16 years, and his wife's in the front seat. Well, the wife and the guy in the back seat get into a stupid fit, you know, hissy fit, and the husband pulls over, lets his friend out like, for 16 years, and is like, hey, dude, get off. That's it. Get out. Wow. I was like, oh, my God. I mean, we stayed quiet and everything until we got home. I went and go pick him up and stuff, but, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, I mean that's... Would you do that? Well, again, if somebody were in my car making trouble, uh, that's one question. If somebody were in my car and I was there with a chick who was yelling and screaming and annoying, uh, I would not let some guy out of the car because some chick was being a bitch. (laughs) All right, well... I just wanted to get your opinion on it. Uh, you're doing a great job. Can you take me African uh, tribal style? I certainly can. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Kota lenenge, asika mama. Oya kota lenenge, asika mama. Danny, on the top like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay, Danny. Hey, I just want to let you know that uh, World Chamberlain actually did average 50 points a game. For one season. Yeah, for one season. Not for his career. Oh, no, For no. his he, career, he, his average was 30 points a game, not 50. Yeah, but you said nobody has ever uh, averaged 50 points in one season. No, game. that's not what I said. I said no one's averaged 50 points a game, and that's true. Yes. Okay, Tom. You got me. I thought you said season. No, no. Will Chamberlain in, uh, I think it was 61, 62. Yeah. Uh, average 50 point something a game. It was just over 50. And, yeah. uh, and that was the season he scored 100 points in a game at Hershey, Pennsylvania. A game that was not televised. Yes. 100 points. And that's the record that Kobe Bryant almost broke. Uh, but, uh, no, for his career, he ended up with 30 points. And Kobe uh, did not average 50 points. He averaged under 30 this season. Yeah, under 30 this season. About 28 or 27 and a half, something like that, as part of his effort to feed his teammates more and, uh, you know, uh, more assists, more block shots, et cetera. Well, that's why they're going to take the title this year, Tom. And that's why he got MVP this year. Yes, sir. All right. Blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Mark. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Father. Hello, son. Tom, uh, probably about almost two months ago, I went down to the Mexico with one of my buddies, and uh, we were down there for a little while, and uh, getting, we were partying, getting real drunk, and uh, his sister ended up being down there on a pad, and uh, long story short, I ended up uh, banging out his sister, and uh, he got real sad about it. And uh, what, have I, what have I told you about that? You know what, Tom? I was really wasted, and I didn't even really know what I was doing. Sure you knew what you were doing. 
I swear, Tom. I was... I've, I've never done that. Yeah, but I, I mean, I regret it, but there's nothing I can do now. I can't take it back. So what's done is done. And uh, I haven't talked to him since. He's, uh, he's real upset about it, and he's going around uh, telling all the all the girls I talk to and all the guys I talk to and stuff that, you know, I ended up raping his sister, and I forced her to do all this stuff, and I beat her, and he's just totally making me look bad. And then he says that uh, he, he wants to fight me and kick my ass and all this stuff, and uh I try to call him, and I can't even get a hold of him. Yeah, well, he's understandably upset. What do you think I should do? You're just going to have to give it time, and he may never recover from this. Yeah. I mean, you really have to think about this stuff. If you're too drunk to know what you're doing, you're too drunk. Yeah. So you think I That's not do? partying anymore. That's blacking out. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, well, that's a sign of alcoholism, pal. Yeah, we were in, we were in Mexico, so... I don't, I don't care know. where you were. It's a sign of alcoholism. Yeah. If you are telling the truth that you really were blacking out, you got a bigger problem than just banging your friend's sister. Yeah. So, I yeah we... No one likes to party more than I do. And few people I know party as much as I do. Okay, <laughs> but one thing I don't do is get into so much trouble that I don't know what I'm doing, that I couldn't remember everything the next day. Yeah, so you think oh, I should just chill out and give it some time? That's all you can do, and understand he may never get over it. Yeah. All right, Tom, well, thanks a lot. Can you, uh, can you take me out uh, porno style? I certainly can, Mark. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. This is Katie. Hello. Hi Tom. How are you? I'm okay, Katie. I can't believe I'm talking to you. Neither can <laughs> I. Oh, uh, so I was listening, and you guys were talking about Survivor. Um, I was on Survivor, and I just wanted to clarify. I know you don't watch reality TV, but um, I do, and I was on Survivor. And I'll tell you right now, it is not scripted. Well, uh... and it's not made for women either. Uh, Pretty much a boys' club. I I believe that most television is made for women, including Survivor. Really? Yes. How so? Uh, because that's who's primarily interested in watching the content. Women. The content of Survivor. The content of most television. No, that show is made for men. They only pick women that look good in bathing suits. Usually, they'll have like one woman. That's in an attempt off. to get men to watch. But when you get right down to it. All of the drama of the show and all of the music and all of the long pauses and everything. Come on. Stop. Stop. Yeah, I'm not, I am not ever going to accept the idea that <laughs> they don't tell you to wait a little longer before answering a question or coach you on how to speak or how to rephrase something. Did you tell me the truth? Because other people who worked on the show will call in and will dispute it. Uh, did, were you ever asked if it's reality? Were you ever asked to reshoot anything? Um, no. Never. Never. No, unless, it was, unless there was a, a problem with, like, the tape or something like that. Well, they, 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 then it's not reality. Right there, it's fake. No, no, no. Of course it is. Possible. You know, in a documentary, that that would not be considered to be kosher. Uh, in a uh, TV news department, that would not be kosher. I'll tell you what, if we found out at CBS News that they were making a documentary, and that it was uh, that they asked people to re-say what they said or stand over here again and do that again, what you just did. That, that's a violation. It's it's not reality. Well, I mean, it's different because you're doing interviews, you know, and you're sitting down and, and you're talking to a producer. You're not just sitting in front of the camera. Someone's asking you questions. So in that respect, yes. However, for the most part, they don't even talk to you. They just let you do what you do and... and like the camera people, even if they step on your foot, they don't say, excuse me. You know, they're they're just there to observe. And a lot of these camera people and producers all work on... Well, then one has to wonder why so many people who work on reality shows are demanding to be uh, paid as writers, claiming 
yes. that they are writing these shows, and the shows credit no writers because they say, oh, the show is reality. Yeah, that's interesting. They are Don't you think that's line. interesting? So all those people lying? No, they're weaving a storyline. You know, they're. What do you mean weaving taking... a storyline? You can't weave. When you wake up every day, are you weaving a storyline? Of course, my life is very interesting. Uh, well, <laughs> guess what? Your life is unscripted, and if you were hit by a bus, nobody's going to say, "Could you step off that curb again?" <laughs> we didn't get that. <laughs> that that is reality. Okay, you all have right, to understand. There's right. a reality, <laughs> and what is on these shows, and I'm not picking on survivors. I, I, that's how reality shows are. Well, I mean, you'd, you'd have to go out there and experience it, but it really is. It is what it is. What you see on TV isn't isn't what happened. My experience was much different than... Well, if it what isn't was... what happened, then it isn't reality. Well, it happened. It totally happened. But no, 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 no. Just everything that... It, look, everything that happened in the movie Gone with the Wind happened, okay? It all happened on a set. A camera was rolling, and they put it on film. Gone with the Wind uh, in comparison to Survivor? Yes. Well, again, uh, the reason is because just because you're seeing a, a line that someone actually spoke doesn't mean that the whole uh, theme of the show isn't manipulated, massaged, directed, uh, pulled in a certain direction. And you just said that. What are they doing? Creating a story arc? What are they doing? They're weaving a story Weaving line. a story like, well, why would you if if free if it's reality? Why would you need to weave anything? Because it's television. You want to people wouldn't watch us just sitting on an island. All right, then you can't call it reality. It, you, life doesn't have a storyline that is weaved. <laughs> yes, it does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Mine does. No, 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 yours doesn't. Nobody says. Okay. Oh, come on. This um, is a great story. This is part of my, my storyline right now that I'm calling in and talking but to you. you, had, you but, but you had no way of knowing what I would say to you. No. Uh, that, and by the way, your storyline, you didn't know I would even mention Survivor or that anybody would. Yeah. So at the beginning of the day, there was no storyline. There was no <laughs> story arc to follow. And I'm not going to redo this conversation when we're done. This is the <laughs> only time we're going to do it. I'm sorry. What did you say? Thank you for calling. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. More of your telephone calls are coming up. Tom Likas. Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I hope that you're writing down all these hours that you're spending on the radio because these are public and community service hours, sir. You are doing a community service. You are spouting truth and telling these dumb people that I see all day long to use condoms and stop procreating. Right. You are doing community service, sir. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Kevin on the top line, you show hello. Hello, father. Hello, son. Hello, Tom. Uh, a long, long-time listener, first-time caller, Tom. Uh, I'm 19 years old, have a girlfriend of 20 years old, been dating for about nine months. Uh, over the past few days, she's been uh, she's been checking my, my phone. My You're friend. 19 and you have a girlfriend? Yes, yeah. And why is that? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm. You don't uh, have game. I guess not, Tom. I just uh, pussy. I guess as you say. Yeah, well, if you had game, you wouldn't need a girlfriend. Yeah, I know, Tom. Uh, but the thing is that, um, well, she she's been checking my uh, my texts and my 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 incoming calls and all that. Well, that's a that, there's a there's a good example of why you shouldn't have a girlfriend right there. Right. I mean, I had no problem with that. Why did you have no problem with it? I mean, because I have nothing to hide, really. And I really That's not the point. Do you? Uh, what, it's none of her business who you talk to. Yeah, I know. So you're a complete yeah, pussy letting her look at your phone. Yeah, yeah, I, I certainly am. Um, and well, last night I was down at her house, and when I told, uh, I asked her, I was like, "Hey, can I see your phone, please?" I was like, "You know what? You've gone through mine. Can I? Can I see yours?" And she got, uh, she got, I mean, she got, she got pissed off. She's like, "No, why?" She's like, "This is my stuff, and I don't like anybody checking my phone." So oh, there you go. So what I did is uh, I didn't say a word. I got up. I thought, what would Tom Likas do? Open the door, left, and, uh, well, till now she hasn't texted me or called me. So um, that's where I stand now. Yeah. And so uh, what is your big plan here? Well, I have no idea. I don't know. What do you mean you have no idea? 
I don't know, Tom. Uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and you're asking me? Uh, yeah. Tell me you don't know what I'm going to say. Uh, pretty much. Uh, I Can I really figure it out, DTV? So why do you need to call me? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just... Uh, you know, Kevin, you are the exception to the rule. You know, I usually tell guys not to have a girlfriend at 19, but you sound particularly mature in this case. I think that you should call back, beg her forgiveness, and continue to answer to her. Do whatever she tells you to do, and you don't need to see her telephone. She has a right to privacy. I say the two of you are made for each other. Is that what you were, is that what you were expecting to get? Uh... No, actually, I wasn't, Tom, but... Uh, so yeah, then why did you even need to call here? Well, I uh, just thought I'd share my uh, little story with you. Tom. Well, all right, but the point is you're asking me for advice when the reality is you know exactly what I'm going to say. No yeah. girlfriends at 19. And yeah. the re the fact that this stuff is going on is the reason. This is one of the many reasons not to have a girlfriend at 19. Right. Yeah, I guess I'm just whooped and, uh, well... Yes, you yeah, are whooped. No yes, you are. Uh, um... Could you please take me out of African tribal style? <laughs> yes, I can. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. Kota lenenge, asika mama. Oya kota lenenge, asika mama. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. Rafi on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Rafi. How you doing? Great. All right, I got a question for you. Yeah. I know you're a sports fan. I am. So tonight's a big game for the Lakers. Well, what do you what do you think the odds are them covering the spread? I'm not an expert in the covering the spread thing. Uh I don't even know what the spread is to be honest with you because I'm minus not... 5 minus 5 Utah. Well, <laughs> you know again, um I'm not a basketball gambler. Uh, so far, uh, the Jazz have not come within five points of the Lakers. And they're, show it, they're not showing signs of life. Do you think that the home record, that, that play at home, can sway, you know, your opinion on what you think the Lakers can do? Uh, look, uh, we, don't, we haven't seen the Lakers in playoff mode playing in Utah yet. So who knows? If the Laker fans are lucky, the Jazz fans will start booing Derek Fisher which will motivate Kobe to score 87 points, and that'll be the end of the game. We know it. We want that. Of course we I'm, do. I think I'm going to go for the covering the spread. Uh, well, I think the odds are, uh, again, don't don't make a bet on my say-so, but uh, I think the odds are it. five points. <laughs> so far, uh, the Jazz look like they're sleepwalking through the playoffs, except for uh, Williams in that last game. Where, where was the rest of that team? Boozer's not even there. This is this might be his day to shine. So that's Kirilenko has turned event. into such a stiff. He's yeah, like he's the he's, there. he's like the Russian uh, Kwame Brown. He's AK twelve, no forty seven. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> hey, I think his out? wife Kobe needs to. Style. I think his wife needs to give him that once a year uh, affair she lets him have. Kirilenko. Why does he just dump the wife and use the money and get some more ladies? Do you know about that? That's what I'm talking about. Take me out, Kobe Style. No, I'll take you out, Kobe Style. Here you go. <laughs> Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Yeah, Andre Karolinko. There was a big story several years ago in the New York Times about how his wife lets him have one affair every year, but that's all he gets. He gets to bang somebody else once a year. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Yvette on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom, long time listener, first time caller. Thank you so much. Hey, I have a. I need some advice with something. Um, I recently moved in with my boyfriend and our neighbor. We've been living there for a month, and our neighbor came upstairs. Yesterday, we had guests over, and she was like, oh, you guys are really loud and blah, blah, blah. And then she said, I have a problem with the walking and the, in the middle of the night. And then she said, and I, by the way, she's like, I know this is really embarrassing, but I hear you guys having sex. And I've been having to sleep in the living room for the past month. 
<laughs> you know, I uh, I have an experience like this, Yvette. Um, in fact, on the wall at my office at home, I have the letter that one of my neighbors anonymously wrote yes. when, I, when I was living in an apartment building while my house was being renovated. Yes. And, uh, yes, there were neighbors banging on the walls and calling the management of the building. The funniest thing, the best of all. Yes. was I got a call at home from the owner of the building. Wow. He's at some, like, management office in, in Burbank, and, and the phone rings, and it's him. And he's like, uh, is this Tom Likas? Yes. Oh. Um, and it's like, you had to hear this call. It was so good. He's like, oh, um, uh, I, I like your show and all. I'm happy to have you as a tenant, uh, you know. Um, yeah. that, but there's one thing. Uh, there's... Uh, you know, uh, one of the neighbors, actually several of the neighbors, uh, they 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 say they hear noise coming from your apartment late at night, and it sounds like uh, uh, I don't know, like somebody's being hit or something like that. My God, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm covering the phone, going. <laughs> <laughs> no, she said. She said. And by the way, you're really loud. And yeah. and then and then she says, I have a 15 year old daughter, and she can't. She shouldn't be hearing that at night, late at night, and first thing in the morning. And I was like, Well, what am I supposed to do? Right. What am I supposed to not get any because it's bothering her? And you know what? She's probably like in her 40s, and I'm sure she's probably divorced. She's not getting any. Exactly. I'm like, What do you want to borrow him or something? <laughs> And then she comes to us like she wants to reach a compromise. And I'm like, well, she doesn't even say anything. And then my boyfriend was like, well, you know, like we're not going to be quiet. What do you want us to sit on our couch all day long and not do anything? Uh, I, I would just ignore it. That's what I would do. Should even be louder, right? I, I would go for it. Are you kidding me? I think I am. And I told you know, by the way, you know what I was have... you know what I was doing in those days? You know what I was doing? What are you doing? That I was I was really feeling uh I was really feeling inspired. Uh this is back when I was talking about they sell these at the sharper image and you can also find them online for cheaper. Uh-huh. Uh it's it's a quote unquote back massager from a sharper image called yeah, those the, back massagers. the Thumper. No no. This oh, is okay. this is not one of those cigar sized devices. This is a this is a large piece of machinery with four rotating heads. Uh-huh. And I want to tell you that the results I got by applying that liberally, okay, uh, it, all of Hollywood knew if I was home and in the sack. Uh, oh. Uh, I mean, you could hear this over the traffic on Hollywood Boulevard. It was like that. Wow. You know what? I have to go to Sharper Image now. <laughs> yeah. You can get it cheaper online if you search, like, Google it. You can find it. It's called the Thumper. The Thumper Pro. Okay. And it, I'm telling you, it's about $200, but darling, I'm telling you, huh? you have never had an evening like that. Wow, that's so worth it. <laughs> I'm telling you. You know, right. By the way, by the way, that ex of mine is gone. Do you know I still have one? By the way, by, not, by, the ex is gone. And, and she's, when she left, I told her, you know, take whatever you want. She took a variety of odds and ends that I didn't care about. But one day I went looking for the thumper, and it was gone. She took it. Wow! <laughs> oh my God, that must be great. I had I to, I'm... I had to go out and buy another one. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna have to go get one then and have the girl move out sooner than I can. Oh yeah, that that you know what? That's the way to take care of a neighbor problem. And what you're doing, as far as I know, is completely legal. Right? What do you want me to do? Like, just I mean, what what am I supposed to do? Right? What law? Any... What law are you breaking by having sex with your boyfriend or your husband or whatever? Exactly. Dang. Oh, my God. Okay, then I'm going to have to do that then tonight. Yes. Step it up. Thank you. you by, the way, by the way, this thing is so large, you, you can't do batteries. You have to plug it in. Oh, perfect. That's even better. Oh, yeah. It's it's like a couple of horsepower. This thing is really. Okay. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much, Tom. It has, it has four large, they call it the thumper. They like, thumper. you know, it punches away at your, your quote-unquote back. Huh? Okay. Yes, it's a back <clears throat> massager. And then she'll really hear noise, right? Oh yeah. As she yeah. hears as she hears all the pain going out of your back. I think I should buy her one and put it in her <laughs> She needs it more than you do, but uh I, I think I, I should give her one. But then. you could have real fun. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Tom. Can you take me out, JFK Junior style? I certainly can, Yvette. Here you go.
Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The advice you give us is worth more than money. It's worth my weight in gold. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. Wide open telephones on this Friday, 1-800-5800-TOM. Jimmy, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Professor. Uh, hello, Jimmy. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. Well, first, I'd like to thank you very much for providing the service that you do. Because of you, today is my commencement ceremony over at UCLA Law School. And I am a graduate. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Thank you, Tom. And I sent you an email a couple years ago asking your advice in regards to uh, how I should plan my future, be my own boss, or what have you. And you replied with, um, just be your own boss. It's so much better uh, having the freedom and the opportunity to do what you wish, when you want, or what have you. And because of that, I'm going to be moving to Georgia with a buddy of mine and hopefully opening up a practice out there. Look at you. Fantastic. Tom. And, Tom, right before the commencement ceremony, I was having lunch through our dean's luncheon and a chick that I'd been dying through <laughs> right before my commencement ceremony. <laughs> True story, Tom. True story. I kid you not. I guess and you you spelled commencement with a U. There you go. There you go with the BJ at the end. <laughs> Well, Tom, keep up the great work. I, I hate to let you go, but I got a lot of family and friends waiting for me. But I wanted to let you know uh, that I did this because of you. It, it was, it's was it been done. I had to move back in with my parents in order to pay for school. Uh, but it's a sacrifice that uh, I'm willing to do, and I did, because I believe in education and a lot of more opportunities are going to become available because of this. And for people who didn't hear you the first time we spoke on the air, Jimmy, uh, tell me again what you told us at the time and, and, and why I responded that way. Uh, well, I sent you an email uh, towards the beginning of me going back to school, and I asked for your advice on the planning of uh, my career in education, and you responded with, it's always important to be your own boss because you have the freedom and the liberty to do what you will and have the opportunity to travel. I do remember you saying travel. And uh, prolonging your education is a waste of time. You need to get in school and you need to get paid, uh, and that's the bottom line. No one's going to give you anything. If you want something in life, you also said this to me, is you have to go out there and get it, and I thank you for that. Good for you. Congratulations. Right, I am proud. I need, thank you. I need you to take me out, Tom. This is called UCLA Law School with a screaming orgasm with a bong hit at the end. Here you go, Jimmy. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No cough. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Look at that. You got more people, more callers graduating from uh, college, callers to this show. I didn't even graduate from college, for Christ's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM. Well, look, it's Kobe on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Kobe. How's it going, Tom? Pretty well. Um, I'm 15 years old. I live in uh, Venice, California. And I'd like to discuss um, Hillary Clinton. And why she should drop out of the race. All right. Um, well, why do you think she should drop? Do you think she should drop out of the race? <laughs> yes. I thought you were going to tell us why, what you thought. But, uh, yes, I think it's time for Hillary Clinton to drop out of the race because uh, mathematically it's highly unlikely that she's going to uh, beat Obama at this point. It would be close. But the longer she stays in and the longer they're debating each other, the better it is for John McCain. And she is uh, very self-centered and is uh, only concerned about herself and not the party. And delusional. And, she's delusional. And she's just going to keep going. She, she's talking about going all the way to the convention. And that's exactly what destroys the Democrats and has destroyed them many times over the last 40 years. It's going to do it again. 
Definitely. It, it pisses me off greatly that I can't vote, too. I mean, how, uh, can you imagine uh, George W. Bush has the lowest approval rating of any president since they started taking approval ratings in the 50s. The lowest of anyone. How do the Democrats screw this up? And now you're seeing how they screw it up. Yep, exactly. This is why I am not a member of the Democratic Party or any party. Right. Um, do you, so do you, do you like Obama, though, or what? Uh, yeah, I like Obama, and I will vote for Obama. Oh, very nice. Um, well, it was really nice talking to you. I listen to you every day on my on my home from work, on my way home from work. It's it's an honor. Well, uh, thank you for that, Kobe. I appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Should I even mention that on the air? Should I mention that on the air? Dean just called Bernie Ward at home. <laughs> Got him on the phone. Was he wearing his ankle bracelet there, Dean? He's having a tough time right now. I know. He's having a tough time, yes. So he would not get, we, uh, Dean was trying to get him to come on the show. He would not come on, but he told Dean that he respects me greatly. <laughs> Is that so? Well, well, well. <laughs> Dean's insane. Calling Bernie Ward at home. <laughs> Dean, where did you get that phone number? I found it. You found it? <laughs> Zabalaba ding dong, I think. <laughs> Unbelievable. 1 800 5 What can I say? Bernie Ward? Former radio talk shows five years in prison for sending photos of children having sex to others on the Internet. Boy, oh, boy. Uh, it's Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. <laughs> Hello, Mark. How's it going? I know it's going good. Yes, it is. Friday, big game tonight. Listen. First thing, I am so proud of you, Father, because not only have you given awesome public service to all these jackasses out there, but you're also a very successful young man, and I'm very proud of you. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Now, the reason I'm calling is we're talking about reality TV a little earlier. Yes. I know. I think there's a show called The Kardashians, and Bruce Jenner is like the adopted father figure of these young ladies. I, you know, I couldn't tell you. Well, I got the Bruce Jenner part down. Ready for this? About a year ago. Because I'm less I'm looking at that pair of brown nipples in front of me. I, I have nothing else to look at with Kim Kardashian or her family. <laughs> couldn't care less. Well, here's what's even funnier. You're talking about scripted TV. If these guys were to follow these people around when they don't know it is when the reality happens. I was in a parking lot about a year ago at a Starbucks in Westlake. I was just visiting a golf course and I live out there. But I see Bruce Jenner. I, you know, when I grew up as a tiny kid, I think he won, like, the triathlon or something in the Olympics. I think it was 76. But I remember he's on Wheaties boxes, and I see this guy walk out, and I'm like, holy cow, that's awesome. It's Bruce Jenner. So he goes into his car with his cup of Starbucks coffee. And I'm, I'm in awe, thinking, wow, it's pretty cool. I'm looking at this, this legend. Next thing you know, pot pack of cigarettes exits the vehicle onto the, onto the parking lot. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, okay, that was weird. And I'm like, well, maybe his wife doesn't know he smokes. He's ditching the evidence. Next thing you know, you know, fast food wrappers are coming out. He's looking around, like, to see if anyone can see him, okay? And I'm, like, sitting in my car waiting for my wife to come out of the market. I'm watching. He has no idea. I'm sitting there watching him, and he's scoping out the whole joint to make sure no one's looking, grabs another wad of trash, throws it out, looks around again, and I'm watching this guy pile up this stack. And by the way, he's kind of a scary looking dude now. He <laughs> kind of looks like Uncle Fester. <laughs> All I remember is Sting, who's always telling us about the environment, when he was doing commercials for Jaguar. Are you kidding me? It's the Tom Likas Show.